Okay. Welcome everybody to Mystical Monday. I am Dr. Dawn. And for those of you who um, don't know who I am or you've never watched a Mystical Monday live on Monday nights, I am um, an intuitive guide and spiritual messenger. I am the go-between between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. I am the one in the middle relaying the messages from spirit to all of you. Um, in this format, I am relaying it to the collective via the YouTube screen. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions where I work with people um, directly on introducing and getting and interacting with their own individual spiritual teams, because we all have spiritual teams that um, are assigned to us from the time we're born until the time we leave here. Those members of that team can change throughout your life based on where you are on your journey. Um, your team consists of angels, spirit guides, divine beings of light, ancestors, um, and deceased loved ones, and of course, the source that you know and refer to as God, right? Save the best for last. And so all of those beings and spiritual entities I communicate with um, both on this live and in my one-on-one -on -one sessions, okay? So that's who I am. And I can't remember if I said my name or not, but it's Dr. Dawn. Um, so let's get moving on tonight's topic, okay? I want to talk tonight a little bit about healing because a lot of us think we're healing, but we're doing more suppressing than we're doing healing. See, often we feel like we're healing when we don't think about something anymore, right? We feel like, oh, I've healed from that. I don't even think about it anymore. But when, in actuality, when you're faced or, or you encounter that situation again, it's how you respond that um, lets you know how well you've healed from it. Now, we've talked a little bit about how the planetary shifts are taking place on the planet based on the frequency downloads that we're getting. And we're all going through a healing process, a healing of various things, generational beliefs, um, fears and worries, insecurities, um, self-perceptions, like we're going through a whole lot of healing across the board, okay? So for you to say or feel as if you're healing from everything all at once probably isn't accurate because all of these things are coming up one by one by one for you to deal with on an individual basis. Now, um, let's talk a little bit about how how we know whether or not we're healing. Okay. Let's, let's, let's start there. Okay. Usually when you, um, experience an event, um, or, um, a trauma, we know that it will trigger an emotion, right? We know that it will trigger sadness, happiness, madness, um, jealousy, hurt, you know, all of these things usually, and I said trauma. So happiness is usually not associated with trauma. So my, my fault, but all of the other lower, vi uh, lower vibrational energies, it will usually trigger one of those emotions. Well, the first telltale time, telltale sign that you've healed from something is if you no longer attach an emotion to that person or that event. How many times have you broken up with somebody or you've severed a relationship with someone and you say, I'm over it. However, when someone brings up that person's name or you have a flashback of something that has to do with that person, you start to feel the emotion attached to that person or event. OK, I should say that, too, because it's not just in relationships. It's in events. Um, I had a session with a young lady who had a history of um, like getting behind on her bills. And so because of it. She was afraid to ever pursue purchasing a home because in her mind, the pattern was I'm barely able to pay the bills that I have. I don't want to get a home because I don't want to lose it. So there's a fear of home ownership based on um, the history of barely being able or not being able to pay bills. OK, so we've got to heal in her situation heal that whole concept and mindset of lack and loss. And that's what a lot of people 
are healing from right now. Lack and loss is huge because in our society, we are very materialistic and we fear losing possessions just as much as we fear losing people in our lives. And so very often circumstances and situations will arise to help you deal with those things that you are afraid of. So for example, in the, with the example I just gave you with the lady who is afraid to purchase a home because she keeps getting behind in her bills and things like that, you never know what creative situation your higher self, because your higher self is what's guiding you and your soul throughout this journey. You never know what creative situation will be coming your way um, in conjunction with your higher self orchestrating it to help you to heal from that lack or loss. It could be that wherever she's living now, she may be put in a situation where she can't work or she can't pay her rent and she gets behind. So your higher self says, this is not a bad thing. I'm doing this and assisting you with this for your good. I want you to see that if you can't pay your rent or something happens and you have to get put out, another option will become available to you. OK, and if it's not um, readily available to you, circumstances will present themselves to move you to a place or an opportunity that will continue to help you heal through this trauma or this fear that you have of lack or loss as it relates to material possessions. Haven't you guys ever noticed that like some people who are very braggadocious or people who always talk about what they have a lot of, those are the people who are secretly being dealt with with the universe to help them to realize that those things aren't as significant and as, and as important as they believe them to be. So behind the scenes, they could be going through repossessions, foreclosures, um, bad debt, like all of that. You never know that. You, you guys know that saying, um, um, all that glitters isn't gold, right? You will never know what's going on behind the scenes because they're dealing spiritually with some things that are not of their highest good as it relates to their soul evolvement. Okay. So there's a lot of things happening now in our lives that seem as if they are so bad or it is so traumatic or it's so difficult to get through. But the, but these, this conflict has to arise in your life at this time to move you out of it and to heal from it. A lot of people going through relationships now where they're holding on by a thread. OK, holding on by a thread because it might look bad if you break up with a person that you've been with forever or it might hurt someone if you want to stray away. and You've been friends since kindergarten, like you're dealing with all of these ideas in your mind of abandonment. OK, you're trying to heal from abandonment when you try to hold on to people or relationships and things like that. The overall lesson being or the overall healing that's taking place is abandonment issues. So there's a bigger picture, you guys, for what's happening in your life. Now, you can recognize when you heal from it, not just when you have released or removed the emotion that is attached to it. You make up in your mind that you're ready for a change. That's a big indicator that you are starting to heal when you recognize this same pattern being repeated over and over and over and over. You say, hey, I'm tired of this. I'm ready to do something different. This, is ha this has to end. Bingo, ding, 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 ding. Number one sign that, or uh, one of the number one signs, uh, top three signs that you are starting to heal because you're recognizing this same pattern and you're getting tired of it. That's the biggest thing. You're getting tired of the same old routine and the same old feelings that are starting to surface as a result of you continuing the same pattern. Okay. All right. Another way that you may know that, um, you are starting to heal is that you understand that trouble don't last always, that bad days are temporary. 
things are just passing through your reality as a way of waking you up and getting you to tune in to what's happening. That's all these things are that's happening in your life. Wake up calls. These things will show themselves to say, hey, you're not listening. You're not following or recognizing the patterns in your life. So here, this is what's got to happen right now. And if you don't get it this time, it's got to happen again. And we talked about, about this before in previous lives like last year, but this time it's a little different now because it's more in your face and it's more um, continuous, like the patterns, the repetition of patterns being cre um, shown to you, it's going to be quicker. You're not going to like experience something today. And then two years later, you experience it again. So you can get the lesson. Then a year later, you no, 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 no. It's going to be more in um, succession. Okay. So you may be experiencing, like, let's use the lady I gave you in the beginning, the whole trauma of not wanting or being afraid to purchase a home for fear that she might get um, evicted or foreclosed on. She may keep having subtle situations related to money and financial like discombobulation, not being able to make bills um, kind of add up and payments, getting behind in her rent to get her to see she is creating that um, pattern of lack and loss through her fear, her fear of not being able to pay bills. So she may stay in this rut of always, excuse this phrase, robbing from Peter to pay Paul. You'll stay in that whole little cycle, that whole little cycle, because the ultimate thing that you're dealing with is fear of lack, fear of loss, which results in an overall energy of lack. You always feel like you're lacking. So you may stay in that bubble of lack until you recognize and realize that's just to show you where your um, um, energy is at that moment. Okay. With me so far? All right. So it is important during this feeling process or this um, healing process, I should say, to feel. I want to say, I was going to say without feeling, but no, you, you need to feel it. To be able to feel these emotions and sit in them for a little while. So if your feeling is fear, sit in that fear for a second. Sit in it. Let your stomach go in a knot for a second. Start sweating real bad. Get nervous in the shakes. Lose your appetite. And then sit with it and say, now why am I scared again? Oh, because I might lose my home. Mm -mm. If that's not what I want to create, I control that. I control that narrative. So let me take a deep breath in and out. Let me recognize why I'm feeling like I'm feeling. And then let me change this narrative around to a point where I say, no, I will not lose my home because I'm going to explore other options that are going to be presented to me. Okay. And I know they're going to be presented to me because that is my intention. I am setting out to the universe and I am going to receive the options that are going to be in my best interest for where I am now. So let me release this emotion. Let me release this emotion and know that all things are working towards my highest good and to propel me forward. Okay. Get out of the fear. Now, let me tell you guys something. Right now on this planet, we are removing negative energy um, from the earth and everything is getting repositioned. Some of you aren't aware of this, but you are exactly where you're supposed to be. I tell people that all the time. Do you not understand what that means when I say you're exactly where you're supposed to be? Supposed to be. Well, right now, um, you vibrate where you live, period. Most people now are trying to move forward out of cities, okay, out of the city atmosphere, because the city, the frequency of cities um, is not in alignment with where we're vibrating now, okay? 
And it's becoming uncomfortable for people to live in cities where there are a lot of people. There's a lot of hustle and bustle. There is a lot of extraneous things happening, a lot of energy like everywhere in cities. And it's becoming too much for a lot of people. So a lot of people are starting to, I don't want to say flee, but a lot of people are starting to redirect themselves to more either rural or mountainous areas. Now, back in my day, everybody fleed from the city to the suburbs. To go to the suburbs was the thing. That's what you wanted to do, right? You wanted to have better schools. You wanted to like get away from the gangs. You wanted to go to the suburbs in my day, okay? Now it's beyond just the suburbs. People are going, like I said, to mountains. They are getting away from um, as much of the energetic chaos as they can because it doesn't feel right anymore. You guys are vibrating higher now, most of you, okay? As you vibrate higher, where you where you live will reflect this, okay? So you can tell exactly where you're vibrating based on where you live right now. If you live um, somewhere and you're comfortable in that environment, then that's where your frequency is. That's where your vibration is. You vibrate where you live. If you live somewhere now and you're not comfortable, you say, oh, I got to get out of here. This is too much. I can't, you know, this, the, then that's not where you're vibrating. It's time for you to go on to where you are vibrating. All right. Now, in times past, we would just suck it up, right? You live somewhere. You don't want to live there. You feel like it's the best you could do. You just stay and you just tough it out and suck it up, right? Now, when you try to do that, it's going to have an adverse reaction on you, on you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and maybe physically. You're going to feel the discomfort in your body and in your energy field because it doesn't match. It's way off from where you're vibrating. Okay. So when people say, this is what I, this is the number one question I always get when people call me for um, coaching sessions. And I'll say, well, if, you know, I'll give them all the information from their spiritual team. And I'll say, well, are there any questions that you want to ask? A lot of people will always say, I'm just wondering if I should move. OK, the fact that you're asking me that means that your higher self has already alerted you. Ding, 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 ding. This environment is no longer comparable for where you are. Let's start making plans to go elsewhere. You get that alert within you that it's time to start seeking another environment. But because we're conditioned to pretty much stay where we are, most of us, um, a lifetime, <laughs> we will just try to hang in there and just put up with it. And then as we start to experience physical changes, meaning like we may start to get fatigue or we may suffer like weight gain or weight loss, or we may have, you know, um, 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 diseases that manifest, or we have all of these mental health issues that come up and we wonder where it came from. Well, sure. A lot of it is from our trauma that we've carried with us from childhood, but a lot of it is from also from our current um, life and, and, and where we are and how we're living. And so when you get that nudge, uh-uh, this environment ain't doing it no more. I, this, I'm, Start to follow it, okay? Start to follow the nudges because you're going to get more than one nudge and you're going to get a whole lot of things that come into your energy field to indicate to you it's time to start looking to move elsewhere. And a lot of us won't do it out of what? Fear, out of fear or out of fear of loss. Because if we move, we have to leave something behind. Even if it's a planned move where you know where you want to go, you bought a house, you're, you still got to leave people behind. You got to change it. It's still the whole concept of loss that some people are having a difficult time healing from. These are all healing 
topics, he, things that people are healing from. So, so far we've talked about healing from lack or loss, um, fear of um, material loss and things like that, abandonment, okay? And then fear of leaving behind certain things as we make a life change or adjustment or advancement. These are all things that are coming up now in this um, shift for healing, among other things. There's so many things that we're healing from, but those are um, some of the popular ones that people are experiencing right now, okay? You're going to see small, gradual changes in who you are as it relates to not just physical changes, but mental changes. Your thought process is going to start being different if it isn't already. And you're going to just start um, realizing that your vibration is different from where it's always been. OK, no one. Um, no one is doing this on their own. You all are all being guided by your higher self. OK, your higher self is that God within you the God source within you that is helping you to navigate. It is also helping you to realize the directions and the guidance that you need at this point. This is the point we've always talked about, right? The point where this guidance system is going to kick in, take over and be at the forefront of everything that you do now in your life. Everything is being guided, all right? you no longer have control. Do you understand that? That's a hard concept for everybody to grasp. We are so not used to relinquishing control of our lives and actually allowing things to unfold for your highest good in the manner in which they are set up in your experience, okay? We can set our intentions, but let's not confuse setting our intentions with trying to plan out how things are exactly going to happen. Let's go back to the lady with the house again as the example. If she decides I'm going to move through this fear and at least take the first step, a small step, and just see if I can get pre-approved, that's the first step. That would be a small baby step in her journey of um, trying to heal from fear of lack or loss. Just that one step starts her momentum going. And then once you start that momentum going, you see, hey, I got, you know, they're saying I need to do this in order to qualify. Okay, I can work on that. I got a plan. You're setting the intention to get your plan. Or it could be that she's afraid of something that she doesn't need to be afraid of. They may say, oh, you can qualify now. If you do, blah, 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 blah. It's just that fear of the unknown that scares us all. And that fear of taking that first step no matter what the circumstance is, that will scare most of us and keep most of us stagnated where we are. You can't be stagnated now in the shift. Taking steps, no matter how small, is required right now. It's required for your mental, physical, and spiritual well-being. Being stagnant is going to cause you to have some effects from being stagnant. Okay. Question so far. No questions. Everybody's with me. If where you live is not bringing you joy anymore, that means you are no longer at that vibration. I'm, I, I want to harp on this because I get so many people who talk about where they live and, you know, how they're ready to go and how like, but, but, but making that move is so traumatic. If where you are now, I'm going to say this again, does not bring you joy or does not bring you fulfillment, then why are you there? You are literally sitting there 
waiting for your physical and spiritual body to manifest some energetic experiences to show you that we need to start making at least, if not steps towards going, mental kind of thoughts in our mind to start getting our mind um, in the in the with the, in the idea of moving forward. So sometimes big the steps aren't actual steps. The steps are just starting to think the thoughts that are involved in getting you to um, carry out the actual the actions for a particular um, concept or idea that you're trying to deal with at that moment. Okay, but don't get mad when you are not happy where you are because you are exactly where you're vibrating. I don't think people realize that because there are some people who live in some places that they go are not safe, are not where they would want people to come visit and where they don't even like being in um, on a day-to-day basis. But that's where you're vibrating. If you're there, that's where you're vibrating. You could not exist in that environment, if you weren't vibrating at that level, you would be pushed, almost forced to make other changes and arrangements to start moving out of that. Okay. We have to understand, we talk about generational um, conditioning and learning. I don't want to use curses, but we talk about these things. People who see themselves in a state of lack and loss, often stay in that mindset mindset because they are involved in families with the same mindset that continuously help each other to stay in lack. Do you understand? I mean, I hate, it's, it's just, it's the way it is. It's a cycle that goes round and round and round and it doesn't stop until someone says, hey, this isn't feeling too good for me. This, I'm not, I'm not on this. I need to do something different and breaks through that. And it's not just with where you live, it's how you're living. You may have, like we talked about, um, I think in previous lives, as it relates to African Americans and our culture and our eating habits and how it We develop some of our eating habits from slavery, you know, eating scraps, you know, fatty foods and um, fried foods. It's it's what we are generationally, you know, have been taught. But until or if we want to make changes as it relates to our health and well-being, we've got to step out of the conditioning to do something different or it just the cycle repeats, which is why genetically we're already predisposed to things like high cholesterol, high blood pressure because it's in our genes because the cycle we continue to keep it going it doesn't stop until we change it same with your vibrational pattern as it relates to your living environment, your job situation and who you're around until that those changes are made your vibration stays the same, you keep attracting the same, and you keep living through the same cycle over and over and over again, okay? So um, another way you know that you're healing is that you don't give up easily anymore. Now, if you're not healing, usually, like I just gave you the example before with moving away from somewhere you're not happy to be where you're living. If you're not happy and you don't do anything and you give up, you just give up and say, forget it. It is what it is. It's all I can afford. I can't do better. Then we still have that um, um, area that needs to be healed as it relates to lack and loss and fear of um, losing. And so what do we do? We have to realize that um, we don't have to give up. If you find yourself in a state of persistence and you want to keep going and you say, I'm not going to stop, I'm not going to you know, stop till I get what I want, you know you're healing because you're moving and you're putting things in motion and you're not giving up. All right. 
They say that you know you're healing when you start laughing and singing more. They say you've never seen a depressed person really sing songs a lot or laugh, right? So you know that you're healing when you start laughing more, when you're singing more, when you're dancing more, when you're just spontaneously light on your feet. You are healing more. So you have to be aware at all moments. Like we say, we, we practice mindfulness. We're in the now. We're not in the future. We're not in the past. We're in the now. Every moment of your day, you are constantly looking at where you are vibrationally. Are you in the now or are you thinking about something that happened last year? Or are you worried about something that's going to happen next month? Like, where are you? When you find yourself going forward and backward, forward and backward, forward and backward, you're not practicing mindfulness. You're not practicing being in the now. You are not practicing healing and growth. You're moving and fluctuating. So being mindful of where you are at all times helps with your energy and your vibrational increase because you become aware of circumstances and things that are working for you and against you. Um, Denise says, we don't want to be pushed out our community <laughs> with gentrification. Well, yeah, that that's, we're, 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 that's something a little different, Denise, a little different. Um, we just want to look at it in terms of what's comfortable for you. Okay. My grandmother, God rest her soul. She lived in the inner city of Chicago until the day she died. That's what was comfortable for her. She didn't want to go outside of the city of outside the city. Anything outside of the city was out of her comfort zone. So it doesn't have to do with exactly like crime and things like if you're comfortable if you're comfortable in that then so be it but if you're not is what we're talking about if you're not then you're working against where you are vibrationally okay that's what we need to understand um who else says something? Oh, we don't get afraid. We get aware. Absolutely. Anything that you're afraid of now, I guarantee if you become aware of why you're afraid of it or why it's happening in your life, you won't be afraid anymore. You, your awareness will kick in. You will understand why things are happening the way they are, and you will be able to deal with them accordingly. Okay. Because what things are always working out for your highest good always. Don't get caught up in your mind and your thoughts. They will keep you all turned around. You will never grow if you stay in your mind and your thoughts. We're now in our hearts now and our emotions. We are going from what feels right, not what sounds right, not what we've played in our minds back and forth and we've kind of worked out, you know, What's logical, what's not, we're going by kind of what feels right, what feels right to us right now. And a lot of you are afraid to follow your feelings, right? Because if you're like me, you were taught not to be emotional. I was always taught not to act from a place of emotion, okay? But now it's like we're kind of having to do that a little bit because our emotions are guiding our intuition. Our intuition is guiding us through our emotions. So we're having to listen and follow our emotions to get through a lot of things that are happening in our lives right now. Okay, so most of you probably are in change state in your life. You want to make changes. You are, make cha are making changes. You're going through changes. And some of you, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't. I posted something today on Facebook. I said, Facebook today, I said, hey, I said, you know, I, I, I'm awake now. So you just like bear with me as I'm going through some difficult things right now. Because once you become awakened, once you become awakened, you're going to go through some things because now you're aware of all of the inner conflicts that you've had all your life and, you got, and you're dealing with them. And so it makes life, makes life a little more chaotic for a little while until, as you sort through it and feel through it. 
Anybody feel as if they are going through changes that are not apparent to them? Most of you should be aware of the changes that are happening in your life or the things that are being brought up for healing. That's what I should ask. Is everyone aware of what they're actually healing from right now? What, what they're dealing with in terms of healing? I can kind of, for mine, um, it, some of you, oh, some of you are going through healing of like in terms of fear of death, not just your death, but death of others around you. Some people are dealing with that healing from that. As I told you guys, my process was watching close loved ones leave me that kind of showed me and got me through, you know, death in general and how to understand that it doesn't exist. But how did I understand that? Except to keep going through it and to set the intention to um, understand death more. And that's when I had my awakening. So what are you guys healing from? Um, Robin says okay, healing from lots of letting go, lots of changes of letting go. Absolutely. You're going to be letting go of everything because that's how you get freedom. Freedom is letting go of fear. Freedom is letting go of worry. Freedom is letting go of trauma. You become free when you let it all go. And so that's exactly what you should be going through right now, Robin, because the shift is all about letting everything go all the way down to things that you believe. You got to even let go of the beliefs. You know, we're letting go of everything, which is so hard for us. Because it's almost like we're reconst we're reconstructing ourselves from the top down. Um, v says she's letting go of feeling obligated. Wonderful. Someone who has difficulties with feeling obligated to do things often has a healing of wanting to be liked or wanting to be loved or accepted. Usually people who are having that as um, a trauma or something to deal with, feel obligated to always do things and be at the forefront because it's that I want to be loved, accepted, and liked. And so now you're going through circumstances and situations where you're going to be forced to say no, to actually establish that boundary and say no and move out of that process into your healing. So don't be surprised if you're put into different scenarios, be it in your personal life, your work life, even just randomly where you have to um, say no. Saying no may be your goal right now. Um, she says, thinking about others before yourself. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. All comes with it. Um, neglecting yourself for others. Um, but, but ultimately the core, I'm glad you said that V, the core is still wanting to be liked, appreciated, accepted, or loved. Anytime you feel obligated to do something, you neglect yourself to do something for others. You're still in that cycle of wanting to please others. OK, so, yeah, that's that's good. You're recognizing the different scenarios where you are going through the healing process. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's those are some good ones because we all um, face that at some point. I, I mentioned to you guys on one of my I think it was TikTok or something. I said um, something about are you an empath? Are you really being empathetic to someone or are you really working on your own insecurities and trauma and projecting it outwards onto someone else as if you are helping them out? Because that, that happens a lot too. We say we're so empathetic. We say, oh, I'm empathic, but you're really dealing with your own trauma through someone else. <laughs> You tell yourself, like I used to, that you're helping this person, be it whatever the circumstance, loaning money, listening to um, problems, showing up to help with things. Um, you, you tell yourself, I want to help them. But in actuality, you're dealing with, as I know I did, dealing with not wanting people to 
dislike you or resent you or feel as if you are a bad person. So you do these things, as V says, out of obligation. Okay. So yeah, we all are healing through different things. Now, I think I mastered that one though. I think I got that one down real good. I got saying no down. That took me 40 plus years, but I got it. I got that one. I got some other ones I'm working on now. Um, like I'll share with you guys some of mine. Uh, so I can think offhand. So I was the financial one in my household. I'm the one I got to see what, what money's coming in, what's going out, how much is this, like line it up, make sure it, it adds up, you know, do all of this, that, that, like, that was like big for me, almost to a point of being anal. Well, you can't be like that now in this energy because you can't control anything. You don't know what's coming around the corner in our on our planet, first of all, not just in your own household, but everything is so unpredictable. Everything is getting shaken up to where you're got you're you're actually out of your comfort zone as it rela relates to finances. So anybody who's trying to do their old routine of financial management is is off. It's very off right about now. Because everything's costing a lot more. If I could tell you guys how much the gas was over the weekend, like everything is just, we, it's off. It's way off. And it's done intentionally. It's done to shake you up and to get you to realize to go with the flow. Understand day by day, day by day, you've got to stay in that moment. In that moment, you can't go ahead. You can't go behind. You got to stay right there. You can't even say, you know how we used to say, oh, I get paid in two weeks. I'm going to pay this, 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 and this. And then I'm going to do this on my next check. Y'all don't try to do none of that. Don't try to do none of that. Don't try to do any of that anymore. It is going to, you better just wait till it's almost time. And then the day before, see what you got and then see what you're doing. Because the way things are shuffling around here on purpose, on purpose, to get us out of our comfort zones and to relinquish control. And what better way to do it than with our money? We have literally got to sit back and kind of mindfully participate in this process. Now, I mentioned to you guys, I heard something. Somebody said something um, last week um, on one of these news broadcasts about like the ATM systems and how they might not work something that has to do with Ukraine and Russia, the system, the banking system, whatever. I said, Ooh, we talked about this a year and a half ago about what may be coming down the pipeline, how they are going to do these planetary things to shake things up um, and to move us out of fear. And by doing this, they're going to use things that are in our day-to-day -day lives that will shake us and move us. Um, out of, well, not out of fear, but it's going to put us in fear, of course, for a second. It's got to put you in it to, to pull you out of it, if that makes sense. Just like we went through our whole, what? Our COVID-19 thing. We went through that. We got through it, right? But it had to happen to shake you up, give you a little fear. You made it through, right? Same thing with everything else that's coming down the pipeline. It's got to shake you up, bring the fear to the surface, and move you on through it, okay? But I just thought I'd bring that up because I thought about that when I heard it. I said, oh, we just talked about that. Um, David says, time to move to Bitcoins. Well, that's right up there with our new virtual world that's being being um, formulated for us right now. I actually looked on, I think it was Instagram, and um, Tiffany Haddish was um, advertising virtual workouts. You put your little eye set on, you know, you exercise and you work out with the headset, you know, just like Meta. Meta is trying to move towards the headsets too, you know, the virtual experience. And so when I looked at that workout, I said, oh, look at that. They get, here it comes. They're trying to gradually move us in to the whole artificial intelligence, the AI thing. I wouldn't, you guys don't be surprised if we're coming up on the last bit of homo sapiens. We might be the last. I don't want to say real humans, but um, homo sapiens to be on this planet. We may be moving towards these more robotic um, um, entities, which is what 
has happened on other planets. And so we're trying our hardest to prevent that from happening, but it's happening slowly. They're moving us towards the roboticness, um, as you can see in our lives. And so we've got to be aware of this transition that is attempting to take place. But what keeps us from being different from the robotics? Ding, 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 ding. Your intuition and your emotion. So that's why right now, this is the push. Sharpening your intuition, feeling your emotions, practicing mindfulness. Why do you think we're doing this, people? We're doing it so that we don't evolve or get pushed into evolving into robots. Because <laughs> we're almost, some of us, some are here. Some are in the bot mindset, okay? It's just a matter of putting the machinery with it. So we have to stay aware, awake, mindful, and in touch with our inner guidance system because those downloads that you're getting, those frequency downloads that I keep telling you guys on my little um, postings, okay, you may feel a headache today. Tomorrow I was going to tell you guys, Check your skin. You may be getting skin flare-ups, you know, this week because of the intensity. Like we're getting downloads that are affecting our bodies, but they're also increasing your awareness, you guys. Increasing your awareness in terms of what's going on. You just have to listen to the guidance and awareness, okay? It's also um, triggering and stimulating your chakra system back there. It's getting you more in tuned to what's happening on the planet. Now, um, let me piggyback on something with David's Bitcoin because I want. Let me clarify something on that. So I mentioned when he when he posted that 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 is part of what they're trying to move us towards the metaverse. This technology or whatever. Let me even go further than that. Okay. The goal, okay, for this light planet, once this planet reaches high frequency, the goal is to get rid of currency altogether. That's 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 what the end game is is supposed to be, where we don't even need a monetary system. Bitcoin, paper money, coin, we don't need any of that at the end game, the end game. But in order to get to the end game, we've got to evolve through some things, okay? And Bitcoin is part of the evolution to get there. So let me clarify that. Let me say it better like that. Um, because we're evolving now. Everything that's happening now is evolving us towards where we're trying to get to. Even if some of these measures that we have to go through to get there Seems scary, harmful, unorthodox. This that the, the higher goal and big picture purpose is to get us to that. Okay, a planet where we actually, for all intents and purposes, we barter from each other. We don't like charge or pay, we literally can barter or we can manifest what we want. That's the ultimate goal to get our frequency so high that you literally manifest what you need. Oh, I need a new car. Boop. You get one the next day. You're like, what, what, where that car come from? That's like way down the line, right? We have to do some super evolution for that. Um, but, but, but that's ultimately where some of the higher dimensional, higher frequency planets, that, that's how it works. We're just not there. We're still evolving. We're actually going through the biggest part of our evolution right now that we've had in like ages. Okay, questions. I'll give you guys a second because there's always a delay. Are you guys having more moments of peace now instead of unsteadiness? 
If you're having more peaceful moments, you are healing. I can remember in years back, my days were spent worrying about, like I say, how I was going to pay this or this or that, or um, things I had to do at work or how I was going to get to see all my my patients in one day or how I was, it was always how I was going to be able to do something. Like always, that was 90% of my life, like always thinking about that. When you start to realize that that's not your flow anymore, your life is more peaceful and without less concern about how things are get going to get done, just knowing that they are, you're going to start to feel empowered, which means you are healing, healing. So I hope you guys, like Robin just mentioned, she says more time quiet moments to reflect. I hope you guys are noticing and experiencing more quiet moments so that you can go within. That's what this is about. That's definitely part of the healing process. Um, Denise says, you did say everyone's not going to the new earth, right? Absolutely. You can't, I mean, everyone won't go because everyone won't have this awareness or realization that there's even a new earth to, to, to be going to. Um, so unless we all get in synchronized awareness and we all go, that's probably not going to happen because some people are just not aware that this planetary upgrade is or change is happening. OK, so I gave you guys the example one time that you could be sitting right next to someone that is operating in a fourth, third or fourth dimensional or third dimensional thought process. And you're somewhere in four, the fourth and fifth, right next to them. So it's not a physical leaving of the earth. Um, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you're just there and the frequencies are off and you can tell just in your conversation. Last week, I mentioned some people may not physically be on this earth as it evolves because the frequency may become so high that it disrupts the vibrational um, level where they are and causes some anomalies that relate to physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being and cause them not to be here any longer. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit about last week about the high prevalence of cancer that's on the rise now because of realizing that cancer is toxins, stored toxins in our body, um, depending on where it is, but it's toxicity. And during this high frequency shift, the toxins, they, they have to come up and out to be dealt with. So a lot of people are manifesting this in the form of cancer. So I was very um, clear last week, not to evoke fear, just awareness so that we can stay on top of all of our um, preliminary or um, um, things that we do, you know, preventative care that we do so that we won't be, you know, um, unaware if this occurs within our, our bodies. So we just have to be aware of that. Um, oh, she says that's what she's noticing too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm having skin flare ups. Now I'm having them on my arms. Toxins coming up to the surface. Any more questions or comments? Just remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this whole shifting thing. It's not. There is no right or wrong way. It's just an experience. It's just your experience. What we're offering on Mystical Mondays is just um, help with an explanation for your experiences. Or for some of you, confirmation. That's what it is for a lot of people. Confirmation. You're going through things. In some instances, you don't realize you're going through them. And some, you realize you are, but you don't understand why you are. So it, we, we're just trying to get through this thing together. Um, for those of you who are interested in one-on-one -on -one sessions, please visit my website at www.discoveringyourinnerlight.com. Click on spiritual coaching session or intuitive guidance session, whichever one meets your needs. And we can get to 
the heart of what's happening with you one on one um, as we communicate with your spirit team, your your team of spiritual beings that are working with you now to assist you um, and help you on your journey. And for those of you who are participating or would like to participate in this Saturday's one hour class, please. And it's, it's dealing with the shift, shifting reality. We're going to cover some things that are going to help you now. Um, and I think get you guys in a place of peace and understanding during the shift. Make sure you click on the link in my bio section um, on my link tree and just sign up. It's a free course. And it's this Saturday. It's going to be offered at one o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then again at five o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I have two times. Um, to help you in case one time doesn't work for you. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. Remember, this Saturday, March 12th, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click on the link in my bio and it's called Shifting Realities. You'll see it. Make sure you sign up. Um, children, Robin says, are children going to make the shift? Children are shifting. We are all shifting. Dogs and cats are shifting. Animals are shifting. Everybody's shifting due to these vibrational changes. Um, I noticed that in my dog, there's a prevalence of dogs with skin flare ups now. I mean, and, and allergies, they're allergic to everything now. Their eating habits are changing. Everybody's shifting. It's just that everybody's not aware that they're shifting. <laughs> um, can go to your page to register, can get a phone. For, I don't understand what that means, Denise. Um, any, any other questions? Um, I think you guys, I may be doing a, some live spiritual readings this Thursday on Instagram, um, at discovering your inner light. So for those of you who do not follow me, follow me on Instagram at discovering your inner light, because if I do it, it's going to be a last minute thing and I'll post it on there, um, and advertise it. So you, you guys will know that day. Um, but I enjoy doing those. That's where I allow people to come on one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, where I see you on the screen and you see me and I kind of give you a little short little snippet, a little coaching session from, and, and give you information from your spirit team that they want to share with you. You don't have to worry about being afraid or embarrassed or anything like that. I don't say anything that's going to do that. Um, but just give you a little um, example of what a coaching session is like, as well as some valuable information that you may need at that moment. So if you're interested, make sure you follow me on Instagram at discovering your inner light. And we may do that this Thursday night at nine o'clock PM Eastern standard time. So stay tuned for that. Um, and if there are no more questions, I have used up my time. It's been an hour. You guys have been great. Um, if you have any topics that you guys are interested in, you know, me talking about or sharing information about, please list it in the comments. Okay. Make sure you tell me in the comments section and I will see if I can um, um, address those things for you. Um, okay. Denise, you need to go to the link and um, sign up. You can go to my link on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, all of it. You just go in my bio section on all of those things and click on the link tree and you will get it. Okay. All right. Is that it for today? You guys have been wonderful. Kiss, 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 kiss. I will see you next Monday, nine o'clock PM Eastern standard time here on YouTube. I am actually going to be on a podcast this Wednesday. I want to tell you guys the time, but I don't want to tell you the time because the person doing the podcast is in Tokyo. So I, I'm getting the time frame, the time confused. So I'll let you know next Monday so you guys can watch the replay. I wanted you to be on there live so for support, but if I can't get you guys there live, at least I'll give you the information on the replay so you can watch it. So um, wish me luck on that. All right. I will see you guys next week. Everybody take care. Have a good night. And just remember, there is no wrong way to shift. Just keep shifting to your new reality. Good night.